Now we've uh, some serious walkers on our walk today and a man for whom this is probably chicken feed because our next guest has climbed Mount Everest. In fact, I think you have the record, Martin Byrne, for being Ireland's oldest conqueror of Mount Everest. Uh, that's correct. At the present time, I'm sure somebody will go past me at some stage or other in the future. But as it stands at the moment, at 50 years, I'm the oldest successful summit here from Ireland. And you've come down uh, here this morning from Coolderry in County Offaly. Great excitement there at the moment because they're through to the All-Ireland Club Hurling final. But um, tell us, Martin, about your climbing of Mount Everest. How many times have you tried it? Well, three previous attempts all ended in failure. And finally, 2011, finally got to the summit. And tell me about reaching the summit and what, what it felt like. Well, I suppose it's something you aspire to do, but it can also be somewhat disappointing. I mean, you know, there are several bodies close to the summit of Mount Everest. At least five of them clearly visible on the Tibet side. Bodies of climbers who died previously. And you can see them. And you can see them, and unfortunately... Their bodies are irretrievable, is it? The bodies are irretrievable. So what's, what, 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 what comes into your head then? It can be quite emotionally disturbing when you actually see them and know that they did exactly the same as I did. They prepared in the same way. Then nobody ever likes to even think that it could possibly be the end for you yourself when you go there. And of course, on your successful expedition last year, there was tragedy. Unfortunately, tragedy from my neighbouring county, County Leash, John Delaney died on the 21st of May, just five days before I went to the summit. And uh, it really changed everything for me, unfortunately. And a young man with a family as A young well. man, 41 years of age with a family. Yeah. And at that stage, though, Martin, does it not go through your head that, given the news you've heard, and given the risks involved, that, that your first instinct would be maybe to turn around? No? Well, certainly on the night I heard that really devastating, upsetting news and just terrible night for me really and um, I thought uh, well, maybe we should just abandon and return and just give up on it because it ceased at that particular stage for me to become something that I really wanted to do but unfortunately I still had you know my own team and one of the Sherpas had never successfully summited Mount Everest and that was his opportunity so I said well what do I do, do I give up altogether or do we try so we discussed it with our own team and we decided we'd go ahead for their sake. You came across a, a climber in 2010 from Belgium, for whom it was all too much. Yes. So he went up towards the summit, trying to make his summit attempt. The night previous to I made mine, and um, I met him on the way down. I asked him, how did I get on? He said, I saw the first body, and I said, how did you feel? And he said, I just turned around. I said, I couldn't go any further. And I, he said to me, I will never put my foot on this mountain again. So, job done then for you, is it? Having achieved your goal? My immediate focus is to support um, concern the aid agency in their climb in October of this coming year. And they are looking to take perhaps up to 30 climbers to do Mount Kilimanjaro. And I would like to join them to do that with them and they're hoping that they will get sufficient number to make up a full climbing party. So if people want to sign up, Martin, where can they go? They can go online. They can go online, I think it's the easiest way, concern.net and the information is on that. Also concernchallenges.org All right, well, good luck with uh, the climbing, uh, Martin. And uh, thanks for joining us on the walk uh, on the Carl Wexford border this morning. So describe the scene to us here, Rory, because it's a beautiful, clear day. Well, basically, you're looking over uh, Buntlody and both the Clody and Slaney Valleys. Uh, to my right are the Mount Leinster, Black Rock Mountain, right down the Clody Valley, right into Buntlody, right across all of North Wexford, right out to the seaside, actually. Uh, you can see right across the Arklow Bank with the windmills out there, the Wicklow Mountains, Crahan in North uh, Wexford, right up to Lug Naquilla, and little back up to my left here now you can see up to Leash and Offaly, so you can basically see the entire southeast. Excuse me, uh, what's your name? Jade. Jade. You have a bottle of water, but it's not any ordinary water. What's in the water? Frog spawn. Frog spawn. Where did you get it? In the lake. 
Oh, in the lake beside yeah. the walk here. Yeah. And look at that. Wow, lots of frogs spawn there. So what are you going to do? Uh, you're going to release let, them out into the wild, are you? Yeah, I'm going to let them grow and then release them out into the wild. OK, have you a pond at home? Uh, no, I just have like a, a really big old fish tank, so put them in that and then let them go. And frogs. You'll have loads of frogs fairly shortly. <laughs> yeah. I'll give them back to you, Jade. Thanks a million. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the walk. Now, Fran Stevenson, you're from Bunclody. Not originally, but living in Bunclody, yes. And uh, this is an important day in the rest of your life. Well, it is for me because it's the first day since I have retired from the Garda Sea Con. I retired yesterday. And, uh, yeah, so it's an important day for me. And have you and a plan? I decided that I'd go on uh, John's Great Walk as my first uh, venture. And uh, were you long in the Garda? I was over in excess of 30 years. And where did you serve, Fran? Uh, served Dublin and in more recent times in Carlo. And have you a plan for your retirement? I have to take it as easy as I can possibly get it. Uh, initially, um, I haven't decided that I'm moving on to any other type of work yet, but um, I'm available. OK. <laughs> available. <laughs> I'm delighted that I'm out, in fact, because I find that things are getting a little bit tougher and tougher out there on the streets. And You know, I feel like I, 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 I've contributed my bit, but... Um, the fact that I'm out now, now I'm thrilled, John. Time to honest. leave it to a new generation. Yeah, yeah. Well, Fran, enjoy the retirement. Thank you, John. So you can come in all our walks now. You've no yeah, well, there you go. No excuse. excuse. Yeah, yeah. You'll be sick looking at me. You can police them. I'll tell you <laughs> that. Right, we won't pay you anything, but you can police them. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, special invitation. <laughs> Thanks, Emil. Enjoy the rest of the Thank walk, you. Fran. We're also delighted to have on our walk today one of Wexford's most distinguished hurlers, All-Star and All-Ireland winner, Damien Fitzhenry. How are you? Do you enjoy the day? Ah, absolutely great day, John. Fantastic. And it's not like February at all, is it? It feels like April or May. Absolutely. It was halfway up and I had to take off my top anyway, so you could walk around in a T-shirt today, so there's not too many days that you'd be able to do that. And you're keeping yourself fit, Damien? Yeah, not too bad, sure. Doing, doing, doing a small bit. Uh, I suppose when you're so many years playing, you don't want to let yourself go as soon as you finish up. Yeah. What about Wexford hurling, by the way? Uh, the glory days are a, a distant memory now, aren't they? They're a distant memory at the minute, and, and, and unfortunately, I, I, I have the latest score in the league game, and it's not looking great today. I think Antrim are actually beating Wexford at the minute, oh, very, very close to the finish. So, uh, oh, right. not a great start for the right. new league campaign. Yeah, and you're from this neck of the woods, Damien, are you? Yeah, I'm just out the road, uh, just from a small village called Kiltili. It's only eight miles out the road, and uh, I would have actually gone to school in FCJ in Bunclody, who are having their 150th anniversary this year. So. Um, Places like Kiltili and Bunclody, people wouldn't necessarily be aware of them, but it's like almost a hidden jewel. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose if you look out the back door at home in Kiltili there, you have, like, like similar to here, only you're at the other side of the mountain, you have the Black Stairs and you have Mount Leinster. And if there's anywhere you want to walk, you won't get a finer place on a fine day than any of those two places. Well, Damien, thanks for coming along. No problem and, at all. Uh, yeah, so well. Good luck. Rory Murphy from the Clody Loafers. We've reached the end of the walk. The, the throng has departed the mountainside and we're the stragglers now at this stage and it's been uh, I, th- I think it's fair to say a magical day hasn't it? Absolutely magical I mean from every aspect obviously the weather being particular the balmy sunny day in February The great thing is because we had people I think from something like 10 or 11 different counties around Ireland the great thing is they came for this walk and got to see this locality in all its splendour well, that's what we were hoping for uh, this morning when I woke up at 7 o'clock. It was quite foggy and low cloud and we were a bit worried that people wouldn't get an opportunity to see the beautiful scenery that we have down here. Uh, it's not something that would be probably well known to everybody. It's uh, magnificent and as you've seen today, it, it is beautiful and we love to show it off and we love, we're very proud of it. Well, I think after that walk up and down the mountain, we deserve some refreshments. So let's head off now to the Mill Race Hotel.
Yes, indeed. That was uh, a bit of the scene in the Mill Race Hotel after uh, the walk last uh, Sunday. And thank you for everyone for coming along. And I think you will agree, all those who participated, that it was a, a memorable day. And we were very fortunate with the weather. And thanks, of course, to the Clody Loafers, the local walking club, for organising things so well. And the good news is TV highlights of the walk will also feature on Nationwide tonight at 7 o'clock on RTE1. I can confirm that Mary Kennedy does indeed dance. And that's not all. You can see photographs from the walk and read about it and other walks that we have undertaken as part of the John Murray Show Walking Club next Sunday in the Sunday Times Sunday Supplement. There was lovely entertainment and music on the walk, as you heard, and uh, we've decided to give Niall Wall and Seamus Walker, two of our chief singers on Sunday, a prize uh, offered to us during the walk on Sunday of two nights bed and breakfast for two people at Clifford House B&B in Rosslare Harbour in County Wexford. And before the walk ended on Sunday, loads of people were saying to me, when will the next one be? All I can say at this stage is, stay tuned.